Uh, the topic of today's discussion is uh, higher education and leadership. And uh, my first uh, question to our distinguished panelists will be uh, how do they uh, and their institutions reacted to the challenge of COVID-19? Uh, what was the experience in the last semester, but also uh, what is the preparations needed for the universities uh, to reopen? Uh, some of them may not reopen. Uh, we know that some universities prefer to continue the remote uh, teaching. Um, I remember Cambridge universities, and I, for example, that they will continue this way until the summer of 2021. Several universities in the United States also will not uh, fully reopen. Uh, so it's um, basically a challenge for the universities this time. Uh, so please uh, address your, your institution, but if you want to say globally how the universities in other countries react, it's also possible. Uh, my, my pleasure to introduce a very distinct, distinguished pa panel today from many countries. It's really uh, International. Currently, I'm based in Tokyo, but we have Raj Kumar, the founding vice chancellor of uh, Jindal Global University in India, uh, which has been just ranked uh, number one private university in India in the QS uh, latest uh, ranking. And also, it jumped 100 places ahead from last year, currently becoming the top uh, 600 in the world. We have Elena Popkova from uh, Moscow, uh, who works with uh, uh, projects with the Moscow State University of International Affairs. Well, coincidentally, uh, Kamen Velichkov and I were former students in, in that university. So it's, it's a pleasure to see a participant from uh, Moscow uh, State Institute of International uh, Affairs, Mgimo. Uh, Kamen Velichkov is someone I, I know longer than anybody else. We were students together back in 1983-86, I think, uh, during the interesting time of uh, change in Soviet Union from uh, the time of uh, Brezhnev, Andropov, Chernenko, and Gorbachev. So it was uh, quite uh, interesting time of change and experience. We have Sabine Dabritz. Uh, we, we met briefly uh, before and we discussed actually the planning of today. Um, and uh, Professor Mamadov from um, Azerbaijan uh, is uh, also a former minister in the government of Azerbaijan uh, of finance, former minister of finance in the government of Azerbaijan, currently professor in Baku Engineering uh, University. Okay, you, you, you can add to my introduction a few words if you want when, when uh, you reply to the question. So let, let's start with uh, the short-term challenges to the higher education institutions because of COVID-19. I will go by the screen I have in front of me. I have Raj Kumar first, please, Raj. Your, your Thank you very much, uh, Vaseline and uh, the Caspian Association for putting together this uh, very important uh, panel on higher education and leadership. Uh, we couldn't have organized this at a more uh, important time. The world is indeed facing a global pandemic and indeed uh, a health crisis, but also simultaneously on account of that, it is also facing a crisis, crisis uh, relating to education, economy, and uh, many aspects of livelihood. Uh, I want to say that uh, we, like most universities around the world, were not prepared for facing this crisis, but uh, very quickly we had to respond to an extraordinary and unprecedented situation. I must confess that uh, we even did not imagine that we could so quickly adapt and uh, literally within a few weeks, we completely transitioned as a university, which is essentially a brick and mortar, physical, fully residential campus with over 5,000 students and 500 plus faculty members into an entirely online education delivery capable institution. Uh, I could not believe, uh, and I'm very happy to report 
that the transition was so smooth and the level of uh, satisfaction on the on account of both the students and the faculty was just extraordinary uh, and so uh, and i think one of the things that we realized in the course of that uh, journey is that to what extent uh, resilience becomes important not only for countries and societies but even for institutions uh, we had simply had no option but to move into online and try to do our best. We quickly invested in infrastructure related to IT technology, electronic databases, upgrading internet facilities within the faculty housing and the housing uh, of our uh, faculty members, engaged and communicated with students, took them into confidence, tried to build a stakeholder consensus among all aspects of the institution, uh, and then to roll out a plan which will immediately respond to the situation. We also provided recording of all classes that are available so that even asynchronous framework of uh, you know, education was possible besides more synchronous framework of classes as well. Uh, so we could, uh, to, to a large extent, respond to that. And, uh, and of course, there were four principles on the basis of which we could do that. And those principles were articulated in our COVID-19 action plan that was part of our academic action plan that we promoted to the institution. These four principles were based upon freedom, innovation, flexibility, and adaptability. Freedom when it comes to schools and individual faculty members to refashion their curriculum and courses and programs to deal with the situation. Innovation is about to provide innovative opportunities in teaching, assessment, grading, and all of that. Uh, you know, flexibility is to provide academic flexibility for students as well, uh, including a, you know framework of assessment that did not necessarily have the traditional form of assessment. And adaptability is for the entire university system to adapt to that new situation. So that is how we respond to the crisis. I'm happy to report that we are in the uh, we are coming to the end of this last semester, and the exams are also about to be uh, getting over. And now we are obviously gearing up for the next uh, uh, situation, which will itself pose new challenges for the starting of the new academic year. Thank you very much, Raj. Uh, something I want to add is the opportunity for 100 graduates of Jindal Global University to start an internship in the next uh, six months. And I think this is an amazing initiative because uh, Apparently, some employers will face difficulties to hire immediately the graduates. So what Jindal Global University very generously offer is instead of hiring external research assistants to offer its own graduates the opportunity to start the first job as uh, interns of the, of the Jindal Global University. Also responding to the challenge of uh, immediate employment uh, post uh, after, after graduation. Now, my uh, next speaker will be Professor Sabine Dabritz. Uh, I, I go by my screen, so uh, please, uh, without yeah. any seniority or yeah. uh, uh, alphabetical order, please, Sabine, go ahead. Yes, thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar. It's very interesting. Um, I didn't have so much time because I would have loved to um, look for scientific proof of the pros and cons of digital learning. I've put it toge uh, together a little bit, but that is for later. Um, here in Switzerland and also in Germany, and originally I'm from Finland, the universities were uh, shut down suddenly and digital learning was spread like with a watering can. Nobody was prepared, nobody was trained. Uh, some of the teachers um, are not like young people trained to digital teaching or to use even computers like it's now common. And so there was a phase where everybody had problems. Now it has, um, it works smooth, but the satisfaction level is not that high among the students. Everybody got used to it, everybody accepts it, but um, there's a lot of um, loss of personal communication of um, yeah, well, I will uh, turn to it later on, but um, the students are not all happy and also the, the digital examination is not um, accepted throughout as a same level as um, a residential examination 
um, particularly if it's not uh, written, but um, oral. So um, next semester, at least here in Switzerland, the universities are opening with uh, um, all these um, preventive aspects which are um, applied. Uh, they are different in Germany where you know everybody has to wear masks even on, in, in any shop or wherever. And, um, but that is one thing. But basically, nobody is trained on that. There is uh, a lot of knowledge about the differences, digital uh, learning and training, with that, which are two separate aspects from point of view of the, the trainer, the teacher, the professor and the student and also with regard to different contents. And um, I think it's, it's useful to analyze that a little bit to look at the future, but that's for the status at the moment. <laughs> thank you. Hey. Thank, thank you very much, Sabine. Uh, I fully agree with your observation. What is probably uh, easy to do is to switch the teaching and the education itself, but universities are not only about the classroom and the education, it's also about socializing it's about spending time in the cafe in the library so i guess what students are really missing is the outside classroom experience uh, because they stuck at home they have the computer in front of them they can acquire the lectures the same they will pass the exam they will get the degrees but certainly the campus life with all its pleasures with the sports activities cultural activities is something which they definitely are missing. So exactly, as you say, it's an important um, thing to, to bear in mind. Can I add one to that? Yes. It's not that, it is this, but not just this. And okay. um, because uh, even in the learning and teaching process, uh, digital training um, is has many, many aspects which are differing, but maybe we turn to that later on. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Now, my next on the screen is uh, Professor Elena Popkova from Moscow. So please, Elena, your time. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation in this forum. And uh, I'd like uh, to, uh, I'd like to uh, take part in this very interesting conversation about the educational problem. But I think uh, my, my uh, opinion, uh, is uh, the, uh, we have uh, more, more uh, problem with uh, COVID now uh, than we uh, think, because uh, the, we have uh, not uh, only problem with uh, online education, uh, on distant education. I think, I, I, I think we have problem with uh, all education and ba basic education. And uh, my, speech, uh, my speech and my opinion about alternative way of education, uh, the uh, alternative for, uh, against traditional learning. Uh, no, now in, uh, is the, uh, how to learn and uh, capacity, uh, capacity to study uh, this. Oh. There is an interruption. Sorry? Go ahead, go ahead. Center for University Building uh, Junior Form Education uh, fails uh, to meet the current needs uh, of a modern person who constantly needs uh, new knowledge. And uh, our Institute of Scientific Communications uh, offer the new uh, kind, of, uh, kind of education uh, university, a university uh, where they teach how to learn university where they teach how to learn uh, alternative model of education and uh, this model is very useful uh, for uh, for any kind of problem uh, with uh, covid uh, with uh, uh, virus uh, with a pandemic epidemic uh, uh, because uh, this form of education uh, is uh, uh, for distant and online education uh, in our university, uh, which we uh, based on uh, in my in Institute of Scientific Communication and GIMO, um, GIMO take uh, part in this process and help us, uh, help me uh, to such uh, kind of education. Uh, 
uh, to uh, for students and for uh, professor. Maybe uh, maybe now I have some uh, not a very good uh, very good Wi-Fi uh, because uh, now I live in a, a very uh, very very far village and uh, I don't have some very good infrastructure uh, with internet <laughs> and uh, maybe uh, my uh, speech uh, will um, interrupt uh, and uh, this uh, I have. Uh, I, I no, I I think that my speech uh, will be no, ten or thirty minutes. But if my uh, my uh, opinion will be far for three minutes, uh, I, I I'd like uh, to I'd like to give you my presentation, and uh, all participants uh, can uh, see uh, this, and uh, can uh, can. Um, study it in detail is uh, this model of uh, our university alternative university alternative university um, <laughs> it's a lot of information <laughs> i i am not uh, say it uh, in a few minutes <laughs> excuse me <laughs> i prepare slides elena uh we will have a second round when you can uh, prepare now before the floor come back to you. But uh, again, try to be as uh, possible. I move to Kamen Velichkov now. In, uh, what, do, what, do, what do you think about it? Uh, can I? Your, your I line mean... is interrupting. Okay, Kamen. Let's cross the Caspian Sea from uh, Azerbaijan, uh, Russia to Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Your, before I, I go back to Elena a bit later. Yes, please go ahead. Um, thank you very much indeed. Um, thank you for these uh, kind uh, invitations to the organizers of the Caspian Week. I find it uh, really very interesting but challenging um, exercise to which I am um, uh, honored to, to be a part of. Um, to begin with, um, I wanted to say that uh, despite the uh, oftenly uh, stated uh, um, change that was brought by the uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic, uh, there is uh, every um, reason to believe that in fact uh, the new um, uh, conditions accelerated um, existing trends <clears throat> that were available in the in the field uh, before. I draw on my expertise uh, um, currently as um, a lecturer at the Eurasian uh, National University in Nur Sultan, uh, whereas uh, there have been um, uh, continuously. Uh, a, a research on the matter and uh, people uh, have uh, considered um, the uh, challenges and the uh, issues related to the distance uh, education for quite some time. Um, for example, uh, two of the uh, prominent authors in the field, uh, uh, Nur Muhammadov and uh, Timirova, uh, have aptly pointed out that, in fact, these um, techniques were, um, were envisaged to provide a quality education uh, for people with physical disabilities, people who want to study abroad, and people living in remote areas or forced to re relocate uh, frequently. I believe that um, this origin of the efforts to digitalize and to, to move the educational uh, process online uh, remain valid in terms of uh, various uh, groups and audiences, uh, which are the prime beneficiaries uh, from uh, what transpired um, uh, recently uh, in the wake or rather at the height of the pandemic. From this uh, perspective, um, I wanted to point out um, that the same processes uh, developed as uh, elsewhere, 
with regard to the teaching uh, uh, curricula and the uh, introduction of online co courses, uh, also at the Eurasian National uh, University. But what was more specific uh, in this case, in particular with the access of, um, uh, in terms of um, internet, uh, um, penetration and um, um, infrastructure. What transpired is the uh, existing uh, still divide between uh, several affluent big cities uh, in Kazakhstan and many smaller towns and villages where people were not so, uh, how to put it, fortunate to be able to adapt because this first stage or the reaction to the uh, pandemic was in fact similar to adaptation of the, to the consequences of uh, disasters events. And uh, on the one hand, one should never underestimate the efforts that have been undertaken and invested. These in Kazakhstan would tantamount to more than 10,000 uh, miles of uh, uh, broadband, uh, uh, optical um, infrastructure connections uh, provided, but still uh, uh, there is a, a difference and uh, this divide uh, should be bridged if we are to return to normalcy. What normalcy? Here I wanted to agree very much with what uh, Veselin just uh, stated about this 3.8 namely provision of knowledge, certification of degree, but also socialization and uh, using uh, uh, constructivist terminology, um, normative uh, impact from uh, living uh, on campus. I'm uh, uh, afraid that um, this uh, latter aspect uh, should never uh, be uh, uh, could can never be compensated uh, adequately, despite of the efforts uh, which I try to uh, apply as well in my courses of uh, <clears throat> uh, online to try and substitute for the uh, uh, absence of uh, uh, this um, uh, interaction, in, of this uh, learning through discussion uh, among each other and with the lecturer in a living atmosphere of a, a class um, classroom. So I really believe that the first stage, the reaction was easier, the easier one. Uh, it was more or less um, uh, universal, quickly adopted and uh, successfully thwarting the first immediate impact of, um, uh, of the crisis on the um, university education no practices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmen. Uh, very briefly and very informative indeed. You, you pointed very well the challenge, which is kind of make a connection between the short term and the long term challenge as well. Now, uh, moving to Professor Salek Mamadov in Baku Engineering University, please. You need to unmute, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Only. Thank you very much, dear chairman, dear my friends, dear Sabina Khan. I am very glad to see you today, and thanks you for organizing this very, very important company. Uh, we, I, 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 I am now uh, work. In, in I have been working in university, Baku Engineering University, also in uh, other university that is unique, Azerbaijan State Economic University, and I have some some practice on this university on teaching in the university online or offline. The point is that the coronavirus created a special condition and regime, no one can and will be managed as before. Interestingly, the virus is a global 
transition period. The transition from the classical world to the virtual world, the real transition is the current transition. And I think the main focus should be uh, down on it. You know, the millennium began with a sharp struggle between the classical world and the virtual world. At the same time, the struggle has emerged as sharp struggle between backwardness and innovation, between religious dogmas and science, science and technology, between evil and good, between democracy and dictatorship. The coronavirus, along with all these negative effects, has strongly supported the transformation of this struggle in favor of the virtual world. Virtual world and electronic governments have created many, many advantages. If we compare the pros and cons of the classical and virtual world, we can see that this ratio was formed in favor of the modern virtual world in a ratio of 19, 10%, because the virtual world requires transparency, strict control, the use of artificial intelligence, independence of uh, people. Electronic government saves almost half of human time, material resources, natural resources, protects the environment, can save the planet from environmental disasters. The main blow for dictatorship, Azeration regimes and corrupt people. Therefore, in democratic countries, all conditions are created for the transition. And in corrupt, uh, vice versa, in current dictatorial regimes. They try to prevent everything. I observe this process in all areas. Direct directions is, the, in this case, in this direction is education. It is more prominent. Education and science from the basis of the transition to the uh, virtual world. From the day the coronavirus started, I suggested to the Azerbaijan government, my government, that uh, online training should be begin, should begin immediately. I did not stop studying at Baku Engineering University, where I have been working, and Azerbaijan State University of Economics, but continued all, all uh, lectures, all uh, seminars on, on uh, online. By the way, these two universities in Azerbaijan have maintained the status of pioneers in the virtualization of the Azerbaijan education system. The Minister of Education of Azerbaijan transition to online education has been ensured in almost the entire education system. In a short period of time, a very significant increase was achieved in the elimination of digital illiteracy and the development of education. We could not achieve this in our country for 10 years, but the coronavirus forced it. And in three months, tens of thousands of teachers and few students learned IT mastery programs such as Google Team, uh, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and so on. Prior to the coronavirus, many of these teachers and professors could not use their even email address. It is necessary to continue education in this form even uh, under normal conditions. After, after, after coronavirus period. Our university is working now in a very important proposal, development. Mixed education system, one or two days or five days, school days of week at university and another time online. The same uh, university and online. I think this will lead to a very, very serious development. 
The program also envisages the elimination of physical barriers, uh, borders to the development of education, the involvement of teachers from all over the uh, world, the harmonization of the legal framework of education. Which one Azerbaijan, for example, uh, very, very needs now? Of course, there are many problems, in particular, uh, the serious lack of electronic infrastructure, internet access, internet speed, and the weakness of the programming industry pose serious problems. Great work must be done in this area, not only within the country, one country, for example, for, the, for Azerbaijan, but all over the world, worldwide. Without taking too much of your uh, time, I would like to develop one of you uh, on the uh, few, few uh, directions. It is important to announce the transition period in the world on the agenda of the United Nations and the de to develop an international program and strategy, international program and strategy. The transition period must be covered at least next uh, 10 years transition from, from uh, classic world to virtual world, uh, also including, including education. A new world governance system must be uh, created. I have some practice in this direction. New convention must be developed and improved. Many, many conventions, conventions uh, for regulation of uh, virtual uh, world, uh, uh, digitalization of uh, economy, of uh, social science, or uh, directions, all, all, all directions. New world programs, especially, uh, I mean, the soft programs, especially data processing program based in artificial intelligence should be developed and such program should be given in status of in the national conventions. For example, the World Database, the election program, worldwide election program, election system, anti-corruption program, anti-corruption system, the tax de declaration of each citizen in every country, all the world, on the world, etc., can be adapted in the form of in, in the national conventions. That is, you, you know, we, we uh, now in transition period from classical world, uh, old world to new world, to new virtual world, electronic, digital world, because we must uh, decide this whole problem uh, on, the, on the worldwide with uh, uh, participating all countries. Thank you very much. It was very, very nice much, to, to participate uh, in your, your, your... That's an amazing strategy. I, I would like you to come, share... Come, the, in, come in, please. Uh, what, yes. What you just mentioned is extremely important, and I would like you to share with all the panelists, but also with all the audience. This uh, plan of action is uh, not relevant only to Azerbaijan, but to many, many other countries. So I guess we can use our inter-university networks somehow to promote what you have just uh, designed as a long-term. And in fact, my second question to all of you was about the long-term uh, implication. What can be done long-term? How university can collaborate better? Somehow learning from the experience, which we, we are just uh, explained, what lessons can we take for the future? How can we reorganize and reform the future higher education? And there are extreme challenges. As, as you know, we, we might be in universities which are doing very well, as Rajkumar mentioned, the top universities have no problem. They, they simply will benefit and will gain much more. I cannot see, I cannot hear you. Hmm? Many other universities well, will know. suffer. So somehow we will might face a situation where students will go easily to the top universities, but they will not actually populate the middle and the lower rank universities. So there might be a challenge there too. Uh, some American universities uh, also are questioning the high tuition fees. And if we follow the model of uh, hybrid education with online teaching, maybe the 
business schools, for example, might need to reduce their tuition fees exactly as to make the time efficiency and the cost efficiency more, more important to the future student. And the job market will change as well. So uh, even if we can deal with short term pretty quickly, I guess what all of you mentioned is that being online also kind of prepares students for the future online jobs. Most of the jobs will be very flexible. They will not be nine to seven in, in an office. A lot of the jobs will be as flexible as the education becomes in the last semester. So uh, again, I will move in the same way for you to add to what you want to add uh, to, to the discussion, starting with uh, Pro Professor Rajkumar. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and I, you know, building on what the comments of our other panelists uh, have been, I think the future of higher education is going to go through a significant transformation, and uh, no institutions can have uh, the privilege of exception in the sense that uh, education and the world of education is going to go through a fundamental transformation, and it will become important for companies, corporations, business enterprises, non-governmental organizations, intergovernmental organizations, think tanks, research institutions, government agencies, uh, to recognize the importance of this transformation that is going to take place in the world of higher education. I also think that uh, we need to recognize the biggest threat of potential digital divide that can create you know, a new range of uh, discrimination and exclusion when it comes to providing access to higher education for a lot of people. I, I think it is only fair to say that some of the privileged institutions, and I consider our institution to be hugely privileged to, to be able to offer the type of education that we do offer and to have a smooth transition to what we are doing. But the key issue is to what extent uh, different type of institutions, including large public and even rurally established institutions, how they are able to respond to it. I think here I have five suggestions to make. First, I think there is a significant need for investment, public investment in IT infrastructure with regard to in uh, providing access. In fact, Government of India has announced some measures, no less than by the Prime Minister and the Indian Finance Minister. Uh, we are talking about uh, a significant transformation to promote online education and digital learning uh, in multiple platforms from radio to television to broadband connectivity to availability of computers to electricity and all of that stuff. The second major uh, transition will also need to be uh, the question of regulatory uh, transformation. Uh, the existing frameworks of uh, institutions uh, in large part of the developing world continue to have archaic rules and regulations when it comes to uh, the educational pedagogy, the kind of, uh, let's say, the faculty-student ratio, the type of uh, institutional requirements to offer brick and mortar learning. All these things have to go through a dramatic transformation. That's the regulated reform. The third major change that the world of higher education needs to go through is to recognize the role of online education, even beyond COVID, but more importantly, to recognize the importance of blended learning, a combination of live classroom experiences with you know, uh, use of online facilities, even on-campus learning, uh, using, uh, let's say, mentored approach towards learning with, uh, with a fair amount of inputs coming out of online as well. In some ways, the gross enrollment ratio challenge that countries around the world end up facing in higher education, to some extent, it can be responded to by online education. The fourth major uh, response in this regard, which is more short term, but has the implication for the long term, is the, you know, in how to make online education not just more affordable and accessible, which it will become, but how do you, you know, deliver world-class education online? And that is a big question because online education continues to suffer from a, raw, a lot of reputational challenges as well as uh, you know, pejorativeness because historically that has been the case with regard to online education. And how do you ensure that uh, we transform that online education to a qualitatively superior experience? And of course, an equally important challenge is that to what extent 
some of the values relating to education, including values relating to empathy, uh, sympathy, emotional quotient, uh, also uh, aspects of ethics and integrity and those type of things. How does one you know, uh, bring that into a classroom, non-physical experience into online? These are very, very critical issues. And the last, uh, I think, is which is uh, very important in some ways, very fundamental is that to what extent we are able to put in enough resources uh, both public and private resources to significantly augment our existing capacities to provide this education in a blended manner. I think these five big issues uh, will shape the future of higher education. Cost will remain a challenge and part of the problem will have to be that uh, public in investment in education need to significantly improve and private not-for-profit philanthropic institutions like ours and others need to emerge so that the problem of access to a large extent can be reduced. It's also important that how do you transition this educational experience into jobs? Uh, we need to be focusing at least for the near term, focusing on online internships and other type of uh, digital experience so that these six months to nine months to one year to 18 months to maybe even 24 months are not uh, significantly affected because of lack of these experiences from a student standpoint. Vaseline, uh, unmute yourself, Vaseline. We didn't hear you. Vaseline, unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Raj. Uh, this is very comprehensive plan. Uh, these five points you mentioned long term, how university can uh, really offer the future higher education to match the challenges of the world. Again, I will suggest like Saleh Mamadov also to share maybe later we can think how to unify those uh, uh, suggestions and maybe publish a joint paper to serve the purposes of the Caspian region in longer term. Uh, let me move now to Sabine Dabritz uh, for her long-term perspective. Yep. Now, how do you see from five to 10 years from now, the higher education sector okay. developing? Please go ahead. Thank you. First of all, um, Sally gave a very good uh, roof of uh, how it's gonna be. And um, there were good aspects uh, for this roof from the other speakers. I would like to break it a little bit down because um, I do think this transformation will uh, necessitate a complete um, rebuilding of uh, education. Like we built it up uh, 50 years ago um, to get uh, good students. I know it from Finland where it was built very actively up. And now we have to restructure everything because we have these two aspects, digital um, learning and teaching and um, residential. And there is no question, digital is coming, but it will not replace resi residential learning. We have the pros, uh, particularly in, in uh, Europe, access to digital learning is independent of social status. Here, the access to uh, digital, digital uh, technical, um, technically, it's not a question, but social status is deciding uh, how you can access education still. But in, in particularly, we learn from countries where there are few people, where they say we need everybody because they don't have endless human resources, that they really try to recruit the best. And um, we lose a lot of human resources if we don't give access to the best, independent of social status, and of course, to disabled and remote people as well. And the good thing about digital learning is also it's reproducible. And it will, and maybe it's not a big aspect now, but it will be even bigger. It's um, uh, reducing pollution. It's good for climate. We are not traveling every day to our universities. But there are a lot of cons. We have a loss of nonverbal communication, which is about up to 80% of communication. And digital learning need, needs self-motivation. Whereas a good teacher is somebody who motivates students, pupils to learn. And um, of course, uh, 
the, the, the learning is also depending on how you accept the role model of your teacher. He should be the ideal whom you want to reach. And all this is reduced digitally. Just imagine you make a telephone call with somebody you have seen once or you haven't seen, or try to achieve something which you have to achieve by talking to a person. Look into his eyes or don't look into his eyes. The result is completely different and there is scientific um, work on that. So we have to make it hybrid and we have to restructure all the little uh, parts of education. For example, from medical point of view, we have different fields of transferring skills and knowledge. We have first clear knowledge transfer, which can be done uh, by digital uh, training quite well. But we have the transfer of technical skills, which has been tried with videos and everything already, but it doesn't work. You have to be on-site, you do on-site training, even on models, it's difficult. If you want to train surgery, you need to have a teacher who says every second, no, not like that because of that. And that is not possible online. And the emotional intelligence teaching is also very important in different fields. If you have a, if you have a, re, a digital nerd, nobody cares how you are. But if you are a medical person, you have to learn about em emotional intelligence skills. I call them like that because it's just an overview for what I mean. And um, so we have to design for every um, study a curriculum and we have to renew what we have because we have now to make a mixture. And what I uh, learned very well in Munich University where we had Munich Harvard Alliance, the teachers have to be taught not a leader or an expert in his field is naturally a good teacher and can transfer what he can do and his abilities to the pupils. There are people who are very good in their field and they cannot teach at all. And so the knowledge is not naturally and necessarily transferred by those who are the experts. They have to undergo a teaching process. And, and finally, at the end, the, the aim is to have the best in leading positions because they will retrain the best and we have to pick the best for each field out of our human resources which we do have and I, I think the rules is good international and everything but at the end we have to break it down to smaller um, um, institutions because it's a lot of work and there are national differences as well. Um, the access uh, to digital world or the the society the, the problems in the society they are varying between nations and societies and structures so um, a roof is good but under this roof we have to give um, instructions for each field like in medicine it's different from surgery or from a uh, medical school basically and um, then adjust these to the different situations and settings where this should bring out uh, the best result. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sabine, for making this reality check. And as you mentioned, uh, depends on the discipline. How, how do you do online uh, laboratory tests or music or architecture? Again, probably it's easier for more like social sciences and history to do online. But when it comes to medical science, when it comes to art and music, it will be really a challenge as you point. So uh, preparedness is necessary. And uh, in a sense, good that we face those challenges so that we can start thinking ahead and make those changes gradually uh, happening so that we are not surprised again five to 10 years from now if something different even more challenging. The climate change is a big challenge. So the, the higher education is in a good time to transform in the next year. Again, I, I, uh, as I advise also the other panelists, please prepare maybe a, a written statement with what you just said, because that's extremely useful to share uh, later after uh, we finish. So I, I move uh, again to uh, Professor Kamen Velichkov in Kazakhstan with the same question, the longer term perspective of the higher education. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I cannot agree more and advocate like others did the so-called uh, hybrid uh, 
model or the hybrid effect um, of the, at least in the teaching uh, uh, process, um, and to advocate for it uh, <clears throat> for a number of reasons. First of all, I remain convinced that uh, <clears throat> we should be not oblivious of um, the um, existing uh, conditions uh, prior to this uh, <clears throat> crisis situation. In other words, normalcy does remain <clears throat> for me, restoration as much as possible of the status quo ante uh, in terms of uh, keeping uh, the best traditions uh, and the best uh, um, achievements <clears throat> in place. We need change, but we need also continuity, continuity as well. So this change and continuity would result into a, 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 um, trying to match up the uh, new, uh, newly uh, digital um, you know, form of uh, um, teaching and uh, preparation of courses by, try, by um, applying the <clears throat> strongest uh, parts of, of the IT technology namely the, uh, in the first place, uh, scalability. Though there, there will be no capacity constraints. And this means um, a lot, uh, particularly for those uh, students that I referred to earlier into the introductory remarks. Here in Kazakhstan, you can speak of uh, a group of people who are called Bolashak generation, the generation of the future. It comes under the program that uh, financed their studies abroad, be it for a full term education, be it for several um, semesters uh, only. So this, uh, this uh, uh, group of uh, young uh, people, young experts that are highly um, valued uh, uh, for their contribution in the uh, um, so social and economic uh, life, uh, this uh, group of people is uh, being given, so to say, virtually to the, the opportunity uh, to uh, attend uh, the, the best uh, classes, uh, to, to listen to the best uh, professors acknowledged uh, internationally. Secondly, uh, there is this, uh, the interactivity um, uh, element to which um, digital technologies um, can approve or make a defining difference, uh, meaning uh, the, the fact that there could be this interaction or many to many interactions. In, in, in other words, to uh, involve uh, as much interactivity uh, uh, as possible into this uh, uh, process. But make no mistake, when we speak of the hybrid hybrid nature of the classes, it would be uh, mm, gross uh, uh, um, misstatement if you imagine it as, uh, as if the teacher would en enter a half empty classroom and will teach to uh, uh, both uh, uh, physically in person and also have uh, the presence of some people who are not uh, able to attend uh, the same class it, it wouldn't work that that way of mechanically um, uh, mixing up if not um, um, uh, intertwining the the educational process this should remain uh, separate spheres and uh, i uh, continue to uh, insist that um, uh, there should be an optimal um, paradigm of uh, introduction of uh, existing and emerging uh, forms of um, uh, educational interaction. To conclude, indeed, nothing can substitute uh, for, for the teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Professor Velichkov. Again, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, with what you just said. It will be a gradual process and not easy one. Uh, and somehow we, we need not to kind of throw away the baby with the water, as they say. We uh, have to somehow uh, understand and try to benefit from both the classical teaching as it uh, has been for many decades and that will never disappear. The debate in the, the efficiency of the physical 
dynamic of the classroom needs to be uh, there. And obviously students will not be happy to spend all their time in front of a laptop. And that, that will also make parents unhappy because they want their students to be exposed to direct communication, like Sabine said, eye to eye with, uh, with the professors. So uh, thank you again. Uh, please, again, I invite everybody to put down in writing uh, your main, main points you made, and we, we will assemble a, maybe an, a nice uh, paper together, which we can share with uh, not only with the Caspian uh, region, but also uh, globally. Now, uh, Elena, I... Uh, I uh, have to apologize that I actually didn't uh, uh, let you finish your previous uh, question, but now you have a bit longer time. So take your time. You can uh, display if you need uh, in a share screen some of your uh, slides. Uh, go ahead, your, your time. Elena, uh, yes. Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Forgive me. Uh, uh, forgive me, Till. And um, uh, I'd like uh, uh, I'd like say that uh, university and uh, especially Russian university show uh, show themselves uh, to be their best. I think in these conditions. Uh, very quickly, uh, university uh, was organized their work turn switch to a remote format uh, and the university I think uh, already work uh, ready for any tone of events and the university ready work in any conditions I think uh, but uh, there is a problem of students uh, I agree with uh, Sabina uh, and uh, thank you for your opinion it's very nice uh, the, I think problem with uh, students, problem with uh, people, problem uh, with uh, our child, uh, because uh, they uh, found uh, themselves uh, in difficult conditions now. Uh, and uh, distant learning uh, involves uh, high self-motivation and uh, involves high self-discipline. Uh, self uh, it's a very difficult. Uh, uh, this it's very difficult issues for students because uh, self learning, a uh, distant learning is self learning. I think uh, self learning may be uh, difficult even uh, for the most brilliant and motivated students. Uh, and uh, the uh, key components uh, of uh, four stages of independent learning. Uh, now as uh, self-learning uh, uh, where developed as means uh, to better understand the process uh, associated with uh, learning mode, like uh, preparedness for learning, setting uh, the learning objectives, integrations uh, in the learning process, and uh, learning evolutions. Uh, there are stages Elena, there is a technical interruption. Uh, uh, can you get okay? Uh, preparedness of uh, um, effective communication ability. Sorry, uh, hear me. Yes. Effective communications ability, constructive nature of feedback, and self uh, self uh, reflection ability is very difficult issue, I think, and uh, I think we must think uh, we must uh, um, describe uh, we must uh, worry about our students, uh, about Charles, uh, about. Self learning, I think, self discipline and habits, and uh, I think we must, uh, they must learn to study themselves. That's my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elena. 
very useful to hear from you and uh, actually congratulations for working in those conditions. I know it's not easy. Thank you very much. And let's go back to Saleh Mamadov. Uh, I don't see his video. Saleh, are you with us or not? Anyway, we, we are no, a bit no. ahead of the time. Saleh, yes. Yeah, 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 I am here. Yes, yeah, so the second question much. is about I, the longer term perspective, but you, you already addressed this quite well in your answering first question. Your actually perspective was already there. Do, do you want to add something finally? We, we are already over one hour. So to tell us your final thought and then I will go back to everybody quickly again. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, it was uh, very useful. I had uh, heard uh, uh, speech of Mrs. Sabina, other professors. Yeah, really, really, it is. Uh, they are very good uh, offers, uh, good uh, analyze. I am. Uh, I agree with Mr. Sabina. Uh, that is impossible all to do online. For example, for for medicine discipline, for medicine specialties, but for uh, finance, for example, my specialist economics, it is possible. But because I, uh, we, we uh, our my university, I work it uh, now have been working uh, now about uh, about mix hybrid. Uh, Mm, education, university, classroom, and also online. One, two, three, maybe days in university, another days in uh, out university online. But it will be very, very, very good. We have to work in this direction. So I think that if uh, I will have some. Uh, uh, results. I'll I'll give you uh, information about it. Thank you very much. Please, please, please select. Uh, share share very with much. all of us. Actually, as you mentioned, the the importance of having the practitioner's type of education is quite useful. Looking at uh, actually the latest uh, foreign affairs, which just came yesterday, the July August issue, has an excellent article about uh, leadership education and how ah. the model of PhDs might be needed to change. So again, I will, I will share with our audience and I will invite our audience also to have a look at the latest foreign affairs article on the higher education and leadership. We don't have much time, but I want to give everybody one final minute for a kind of a final message to, to the audience. I don't see any question in the chat room so far. And because we are short of time, we will go for one minute each. Please, uh, uh, Raj Kumar first. All right, so in some ways, uh, one of the things that we need to be concerned about is that how do you promote internationalization in a world which is going to suffer uh, to some extent in the near term uh, lack of mobility, but in the more medium to long term, uh, more protectionism of all kinds where you know, some of the most fundamental values of globalization and global engagement has been questioned, challenged, and even at times undermined by many leaders around the world using uh, the current global uh, you know, health crisis as an excuse, but also uh, in many ways demonstrating their pre-existing biases and prejudices for this global engagement. So as academic institutions, universities that are committed to global engagement and global partnerships and global collaborations. It is important for institutions to demonstrate both individual and institutional leadership that will not only speak truth to power, which is about the role of universities, but also refashion this engagement and to actually use this opportunity to build greater, more deeper and more pervasive partnerships. Uh, what we are discussing today as a part of the Caspian Association is an example of what universities and university leaders and uh, thought leaders can come together in articulating 
a vision for addressing the big issues of higher education. We need to do more and more of this than anything less uh, during this pandemic and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, uh, terrific. Uh, th thank you, Raj. Indeed, internationalization will be also interesting to see how it develops with the exchange of students, exchange of faculty, how much the modern technology can allow that. And I think, as you mentioned, the uh, test will be uh, which universities will adapt quickly and will show the world-class leadership in the future. Uh, now, Sabine, your final uh, one minute, please. Thank you. Uh, I will turn to the real world higher education and do think we need experts who redesign each study program in the hybrid fashion. And then we need to teach, first identify the potential good teachers and teach these teachers to apply these um, hybrid programs effectively to, to our um, students and people. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine. Carmen, your final word. I, I cannot agree more with the uh, final word being uh, uh, partnerships. Indeed, uh, in partnership uh, lies the possible successful way forward. Uh, I can think of the example under the uh, EU strategy for Central Asia of the um, educational platform, of the example of many uh, universities from Europe and from Central Asia and the Caspian region engaging in successful uh, research and scientific cooperation and joint projects. This, uh, uh, once such partnership is possible and beneficial in research, uh, once it is stimulated uh, uh, properly and encouraged, it may bring, it will bring fruit also in the field of uh, uh, education, uh, modernizing of it and adapting it to the new conditions and environment. Thank you very much, Professor Velichkov. Uh, excellent. Uh, we, we, we need really to think about the leadership and education in the same way. And uh, thank you also, by the way, for bringing to us this new network, which you mentioned between Black Sea and Caspian Sea Research Analysis Institute. We, we need to share that as well with, with the audience of the Caspian Association. Mm -hmm. uh, Elena Popkova, please, uh, your uh, final uh, assessment. One minute, or take two minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very uh, thank you very much for this very interesting conversation and uh, in my final uh, final speech. I I like uh, wish you health, wish you happiness, and uh, wish you uh, meet in reality. Uh, uh, maybe later, uh, maybe in our events of our university of our institute of scientific communications. Uh, and I will be very glad to, to see you um, face to face. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elena. Definitely. We, we would like all uh, to get out of those rooms and those computers and one day spend time together, all of us in a, in a physical way. I hope it happens soon. Uh, I think the humanity will beat this uh, virus quite soon. We hope the vaccine will be available in few months and uh, I know many institutes are working hard to develop that and when we, once we vaccinate all the students and all the faculties we can travel around the world like we used to and, and enjoy time together. Uh, let me quickly see if there are some questions. I don't think so. So with the permission of the organizers, uh, Dmitry Kalinin, I would like to thank all of our panelists. It was very fruitful discussion. I enjoyed it and I think everybody, oh, sorry, Saleh, uh, do you want to say something before we close the meeting or you, Saleh Mamadov? You un unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It was very nice.
to meet you. Thank you, Salek. For... By, by the way, I understand you are very busy with exams and with many other things. So again, I, I appreciate your time and everyone's time. Everybody is very busy these days with exams and other Thank you very much, yeah. So again, uh, uh, I'm very grateful to all of you for spending uh, this hour and more than an hour today for, for the Caspian Association. The meetings will continue. The association is preparing next meetings. So you are welcome all to join. Uh, Dmitry will distribute the link for the next meetings. And as Elena said, let's hope one day we meet also all in uh, person. Thank you. All the best. Thank you very much. Bye.